ICME is an institute that has been around but in a different form for decades now. We started in the 70s, the early 70s, really when computers started to become so important in engineering, design and analysis um, that there was a great need for good computational algorithms to drive this, if you'd like the engines behind these computer algorithms. And that's when uh, ICME was started um, by a couple of professors who worked in that area under computer science. And uh, since seven years now, it's, it's its own institute under the School of Engineering, no longer a small program that was part of computer science, but now it's a full-fledged institute with 140 graduate students working on all sort of aspects of computational mathematics. This atmosphere of Stanford and Silicon Valley is like I think very unique in the world. Like you just have you have so much going on within the university and outside the university, so much technology, so many people, so many smart people working on these things that I think this is a really unique place that you can't really get that anywhere else. If I think something is impossible, you can always find an answer to it. Um, it may not be exactly the answer you were looking for and you may have some uncertainty, but you just stick with it and after the days upon days pile up, um, someone has a breakthrough, whether it's you or a team that you're working with. And um, it, it taught me to be persistent and to not dismiss things that I think are really hard right away. We all work very hard, but we play hard and we work hard. Um, there's a good balance here. Every one of these students, uh, as long as they work as engineers, will need to use the skills that they learn in ICME courses. Because computational mathematics and computer modeling and simulation are so foundational to engineering. So from my perspective, there's huge benefit to our students from being able to take these classes. In, in somewhat of a selfish way, I think there's also a huge benefit to our faculty to teach in the ICME program because they are educating students who will work with them in their research programs and enrich those programs. So the need for a program like ICME is just growing because more and more people rely on large computational models, computer models to understand processes, to design um, engineering systems and to study the earth and, and the environment. So as we're going forward, you know, in the next 10, 20 years, I think ICME will just become more and more important. And you see this also elsewhere in the world. Almost all of our colleagues at other institutions, they're starting up programs like this, uh, where engineering, mathematics and computing come together. Um, and that's, that synthesis is needed now um, in order to, to develop these models that we rely on so much. When I came into Stanford, I was very focused on my classes, and classes provide sort of, they're great, there's great professors, and it's a great sort of, uh, it, it builds a community amongst the students, so it's really great. But the, the downside of that is like you spend so much time focusing on these assignments and focusing on these like immediate tasks that it can kind of, you kind of, it takes away like the big picture of like why am I here at Stanford? I'm here at Stanford to, you know, figure out some sort of research topic. And I would see like if I were speaking to myself coming in, I'd say, hey, don't worry so much about the classes, you know, do your work, learn the stuff, but look, look for bigger picture ideas, look for areas that you really want to work in. My favorite project is the one electric vehicles just because I think it's such a great application. It's a real life, real world problem that's helping people and hopefully it's going to help save the world <laughs> and prevent global warming with electric cars. And so I love that project just because I'm, I'm doing math, but I'm doing something that, that means something and that's bigger than just 
writing an algorithm that's slightly faster than another algorithm. You know, it's, it's actually, it means something, and I love that. Right now I have a really cool project um, that combines everything. So it, it takes some of the physics from the mechanical engineering friends that I have, and it takes some of the high performance computing uh, work that I've done and combines them into a super high performance computing uh, physics application right now, which I've actually made um, very, very large scale and interactive. So you can actually kind of play with it and move it around and it'll bounce and actually do the correct physics and everything. It's very nice. In Stanford's case, I think we like to believe that we are a, an engineering school which is highly entrepreneurial, a place where we think anything is possible. I think we're a, a, a place where individual initiative is highly valued and a place where we do our best not to put uh, roadblocks in the way of people who are creative and have really interesting ideas. So there's very little top-down direction of research activities on the part of faculty or students. We want our students and our faculty to explore their best ideas and we'll be right behind them trying to provide the support they need to do that. I've applied my computational math ground to shale design, to coastal ocean modeling, to oil and gas reservoirs. And the interdisciplinary uh, environment that we're creating for the students allows students to do that too. And I get really passionate when I see students take advantage of that and come back with that enthusiasm to say, hey, well, amazing, I've learned something in the abstract. I can now apply it here, but I can also apply it there. And, and I, if I take a little bit of this and apply it here, I can make both fields better. So you touch for me. Yeah, try again. Try again. It was the number three on the last problem set. You're number three on the last problem set.